what is a project pen? A demon sucking your makeup soul? Or a blessing in disguise for your neglected products? Actually, it is both. Hi, welcome to the Art Hub, a place where we enjoy beautiful things, not just in beauty, but in life. Today, I'm going to share with you my somehow sort of successful story of project panning. Interested? Let's dive in. 2023 was actually the first year that I tried project panning. And what did it imply in my case? I personally wanted to finish a set number of products within a year. But the beauty of project panning is that you can set your own rules. Some people focus on hitting the pen, uh, maybe some weight goals or the number of looks they want to do with some specific products. Was I too ambitious and too sure of myself? Maybe. Did I hit all of my goals? I would say rather yes than no. I introduced eight products. ELF HD Concealer, ELF Putty Primer, Rimmel Last Ingredients Foundation, Becca Translucent Powder, Flormar Green Eye Pencil, a Maybelline Cream Eyeshadows, Tom Ford Lipstick, and ABH Modern Renaissance Eyeshadow Palette. Though the eyeshadow has 12 pens, 12 eyeshadows, so should I consider it to be one item or 12? Anyway, I finished five of them and got huge progress on the rest. Let's have a deeper look into that. This product lasted me through 40 applications before running out. Great primer. It made my skin feel very smooth and very soft. Even it gave a th slightly blurring effect to my pores. It didn't feel heavy or greasy on my skin. Definitely repurchase when I run out of all of my other primers. Here is the first piece of advice that I have for you. When you introduce items to your project pen, make sure that those products work good on you and look good on you. Because sometimes I see that beauty enthusiasts adopt practice of panning in order to declutter or in order to reduce waste before buying a new product. Which actually is true to some extent. But I see that they are constantly using the product that they might not like. They do that solemnly to justify the act of panning. These beauty enthusiasts realize that the products in question detract them from overall experience of panning and make them abandon the process of panning altogether. Sometimes letting go is much more freeing than holding onto the product that doesn't serve you well, especially if you are a newbie in the project pan community. The greatest example of that will be my Flormar Green Eye Pencil. Even though I had just a nibbit of it, I think 10 uses will give me this satisfactory tick that the project was completed. I used it two times and I didn't like it at all. I decluttered it after my second update. I made my peace with that and moved forward. Do you think, how many times have I regretted doing that? None. Best decision ever. Moreover, after watching several tutorials by Natasha Denona, I have found the new love for my green other green eyeliner from Sephora. I think it's called T-Rex. So my first lesson is embracing new love requires a free heart. Now let's proceed with the items that I really liked using in my project pen. Becca translucent powder with its microfine formula is a perfect match for me. It delivers matte flawless finish, remaining absolutely undetectable on my skin and making it look a little even bit more radiant. And the best part is it remains fresh without looking cakey or add a texture one of the best powders I ever had. Now, when I have finished it, you might ask me if I regret introducing this powder to my project pen. I am sad that it is finished, but I had so much joy using it. And every time I applied it on my skin, I liked the way I looked. So I wouldn't regret that because those are some very good memories. And 
nowadays I think I can find something similar on the market, so I'm just sad a little bit. ELF HD Concealer. I would say this is a pretty good, easy to spread concealer. Not quite coverage is provided by it comparing to the one I'm using right now. I have NARS in the shade Vanilla, which gives you much more coverage than this one. Mainly, I used my ELF HD concealer as mixers to my um, other foundation shades, and I used it as a concealer during summer mainly, because I was a little bit too tanned. Great drugstore option if you are looking for a weightless and very fresh concealer. And here is a small intermission from Maria from the past. She's gonna share with you some updates on Rimmel Last Ingredients Foundation and what happened with that. Rimmel Last Ingredients. I can't believe I have finished it. Wow. This used to be one of my older foundation. And in the beginning, we had kind of rough start because as the name suggests, it has some radiant substance that makes your face radiant. And since I'm the person who has oily skin, I'm not a big fan of that. So I decided to put it in my project pen. The need for a good update prompted me to think out of the box and come up with a new and new ways to use it up. At first, I used, this, I used it as a liquid highlighter and foundation mixer, and it were great in summer. But then the fall came and I had to once again reconsider my options. I thought, since it has pinky undertone and pearl radiance, why not to use it as an under eye corrector? And that was a game changer. It made a huge difference. But once again, the usage was very minimal. And once again, I had to pop up with new ways how to use this bad boy. My next aha moment was to use it as primer. Do you think Alf Halo Glow Filter Primer? It worked so well that I'm seriously considering repurchasing it and use it as a glowy primer. Especially, it worked very well with matte foundations like L'Oreal Infallible. Everyone raves about it, but it doesn't work well with me. It sits on my pores and it looks horrible. But with a radiant canvas, I look like a soft focus goddess. So Rimmel Lash Ingredients taught me that every product is a gem. You just have to find the way it shines. Even when it sometimes takes you two years and 60 uses in a project pen. And the last two products before we move to eyeshadows. Uh, Tom Ford lipsticks and Maybelline cream eyeshadows. Originally, I didn't want to put this lipstick into my project pen. But accident has happened and I didn't want to throw it away. The texture was too creamy and too sheer. Maybe if you have dry lips, it will work for you because for me, it was like a just radish balm and it was not long lasting at all on my lips. I have a mini. The full size of this lipstick costs 80 Canadian dollars. $80, I cannot justify this kind of price. Even though the packaging is nice, very luxe. If compared to my other lipstick, which like high-end lipsticks, which is from Yves Saint Laurent, this one. The packaging is much flimsier and it's like cheap plastic. The full size of this retails for $61. I would definitely opt for this one compared to this one because the texture of this lipsticks is much more enjoyable for me to wear and the color is better choice. So another red lipstick from Tom Ford is an easy pass for me. And Maybelline Cream Eyeshadow. I usually use it as my base. It is not designed to have a blend or gradient on top of it. It is designed to hold the color. So usually you just pack your eyeshadows over it and they stay for a very long time. I use it as uh, my one and done look. I have this eyeshadow as a base, then Bon Fresco in my crease and Glass Bull from Colourpop all over the lid. And this is my spring fresh look that I'm going to sport very, very soon. Finally, eyeshadows. 
Recently, I have reviewed the way I use my Project Pen eyeshadows. If you are interested, there is video somewhere over here where I explain in depth what is my new way of actually using my eyeshadows, my Project Pen eyeshadows. And here is my current progress. You see it, yeah? I have completely finished an eyeshadow. Primavera is gone. I never thought that I would ever finish an eyeshadow, a whole eyeshadow. There are three things you can watch forever. Water, fire, and an empty pan when you open your eyeshadow palette. Every time I see it, it makes me so happy. So my next snippet of panning wisdom is progress makes us happy. Progress is a driving force of continuing panning. So find the best and the healthiest way to measure your project progress, like weighting it, or having marker of progress, or having a number of looks that you want to wear using that palette. Just whatever works for you. The next shade I hope to use is Tempera. I use it 12 times this time and hope to proceed with this progress. Among the most visible progress are Vermeer, which is my new highlighter, and Rosiana, which is my new bronzer. I used them four and six times correspondingly. Maybe I will dare myself and say that I might finish wearing mirror by the, by the next update because this is the only highlighter I'm using right now and maybe do much more progress on raw sienna. Maybe even end it up with that. Both of them prompt me to share one more piece of advice that I would like you to know. Come up with the new ways of using the product, but Make sure that it is not too much of a hustle. For instance, Rosiana is quite dark for my post-winter complexion, but it is of the right shade to be my bronzer. So the key to have frictionless usage of this shade is to find the best way how to apply it, mainly on the periphery of my face. In order to do that, usually I use two brushes, the smaller one to put the product on and the bigger one to blend it up. And it works great. Consequently, you might wonder, why do I struggle so much with burnt orange if I can use it the same way I use my Ron Sienna? This time I use it four times. And here is the pickle. It is too yellow to be my bronzer. I have to somehow cool it down by either frankening it or coming up with, I don't know, other ways how to make it work at my complexion. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I think eventually I will have to do that. So if you are interested to see how I repress my eyeshadows, let me know in the comment section below. I will film the process. The next visible progress is in Worm Taupe and Golden Ochre. Remember, I struggled so much with golden ochre, I didn't know how to use it, and I was sure that it didn't work for me. Now I figured everything out. You have to find it a companion. One more golden nibbit of panning wisdom. Sometimes something works better in pairs. I created my other go-to look with golden ochre all over my lid, warm taupe in my crease, and Primavera all over the base, which resulted into using those shades at least extra eight times. So create staple, easy to throw look with your panning shades, even maybe incorporate the other shades, other from your favorite batch. For instance, sometimes instead of Primavera, I used Cleona eyeshadows, but my, the base and the usage for the products that I didn't incline to use still increased even though I used Cleona, other shades that are not in my project pan journey, and combined them with the ones that are actually along the way. And as a result, it secured me a good visible progress. When Frasco will finally experience its time to shine with the spring coming. I use it only two times, but it is a staple in my so-called spring look, so I will use it much more in the coming months. So stay tuned for much bigger progress. Now let me address the elephant in the room, a pen in cypress amber. Hitting pen on that shade was 
quite unexpected achievement, taking into consideration its very challenging nature. I couldn't use it to darken my outer corners of eyes because somehow the color become less vibrant and less intense. But after finishing my brown eyeliner from Physician Formula, I found a new use for that. This eyeshadow proven to be an excellent way to set my brown eye pencil. To do that, I usually use very small dense brush and it works great. I definitely hope that by our next update, the pen will expand even more. And the last four perfectly good shades, but the ones that leave me so uninspired. The first one is Red Ochre. I used it just two times and the last time I used it as my eyeliner, which I actually liked. So maybe by the next update, I will use it much more. What do you think? Venetian Red and Love Letter. I used those two shades only two times. I somehow struggle a lot with these two pinks. And now looking at them, I think I know why. Because their color saturation is something in the middle. It is not too dark to darken the outer corner of my eyes and it is not light enough to brighten the inner part of my eyes. The only way I can see they can be used are as uh, smoky eyes or in order to blend the border between darker and lighter shades. Even in the crease I cannot use them because they look too dark for me to be used there. Maybe should I dare myself to wear them for a week to create different pink looks? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And Realgar. I usually create a liquid blush with it. I am actually wearing it right now. I don't know how to count the usage because I usually scrape a little bit of it into the container. If you want to know the exact formula, here is the video for you to watch. To sum up, this is the first time I tried project panning and I learned a lot about my products and the way I actually use makeup. Here are the main takeouts. I actually do not wear as much makeup as I thought. And now saying that out loud, I'm now considering how many years I need to actually use up all the product items that I have in my drawers. So I will definitely continue project panning and in the upcoming videos I will introduce my project pen items and goals for 2024. So stay tuned if you don't want to miss that. Project pen pushed my creativity and also the product that I thought will stay with me forever were used in the blink of eye whenever I used the right approach or the right way of application. What about you? Are you doing project pan? Do you have maybe some insights that you would like to share? Or maybe there is some piece of advice that help you to clear the damn pan? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to chat with you. Thank you for spending your time with me. See you next time. Bye.